Hi, I'm Monica. Welcome to my studio. I make quilted go quilts and this is my strum quilt. This quilt was made with fabrics entirely from my stash. I used a fusion of scraps, strings and crumbs, hence the name, the strum quilt. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make these crazy crumb sections and I'm going to show you how to make the blocks and I'm also gonna show you how you can join them together quilt as you go. So this pattern is available as a PDF purchase on our website and it contains multiple sizes so you can make it for anyone in the family. And we really hope you enjoy this tutorial and that you learn something. We always have lots to share in our videos and it inspires you to do a bit of crummy scrap quilting. So when we first started this challenge, we gave ourselves a week, but gosh, it turned into two. And we had so much fun doing it. Um, Laura got her sewing machine out and we sewed together. And it seems that all of the filming, the YouTube and the editing, all the videos has really rubbed off on her and now. So to get started, print off your pattern. It has the template shapes that you need and you will need to make some firmer templates using these shapes. So you can either use template plastic, which is available from craft and patchwork stores, or you can use cardboard from a good old cereal box. So if you were going to use template plastic, it's just a matter of sitting that on top of your shapes, tracing around the edge. You will need um, a permanent marker to mark in all the instructions that are written on each piece as well as the grain line. But to simply make our templates out of the cereal box, all I'm going to do is basically roughly cut around the pieces. I'm gonna glue those pieces onto my cardboard and then I'm going to cut them out nice and accurately on the line. So I'm now just going to cut around the pieces on the solid lines and just using my retro cutter, you can use scissors if you like. And I just wanna mention that on the pattern, it does say that all of the seams are allowed on the template, so there's no need to add any extra seam allowance. A tip for cutting out your templates is to cut on the outside of the line, not on the inside. So if you cut on the outside, you're going to make sure that you have plenty of space with your template and you're not going to make it too small. So here are our templates all ready to go and you will have a little bit of paper left over. We try to be as economical with our patterns as possible, but sometimes that isn't actually possible. So we save little pieces like this in a little box and we use these for numbering our blocks when we do our block layout. We'll also have some pieces of cardboard left over. That's also great for making templates out of too. So we've made all our scrap sections and for this we've used crumbs and we've also used scraps. And to do this, you're going to need a base. So I'll show you how to cut the base out. For the base, you can use just a 100% cotton fabric, woven cotton fabric. Avoid using calico, it's, a, it's, it's not really a good quality fabric. So something like in Australia, we would call it homespun and um, in other countries, I think you might call it a muslin. By the way, if you had a really ugly fabric that you think that you are never going to use, you could also use that as the base for your scrappy crumb section. So to cut out our template, for the scrappy crumb section, that's this piece here. First of all, we're going to start by cutting strips that are six and three eighths of an inch wide. And we're going to cut them across the fabric from selvage to selvage. To mark this template piece here, I found the most economical way was to open it out. And first of all, I'm going to start by putting this long straight edge onto one raw edge of the fabric. 
and I'm just going to hold that in place using some tins of soup or baked beans. They make really great weights and I'm just going to trace around the edge. So you can use whatever fabric marker that you like. I'm actually using a 4B lead pencil for this particular section here because it's a nice soft lead and it just marks easily onto the fabric. Once I've done one, I'm then going to flip the template and just line it up the long straight edge on the opposite raw edge and just slide it down until the lines are actually touching here. Pop your weights on again and continue marking the template. So you should get six out of a strip and depending on what size quilt you're making, the pattern will tell you how many blocks you need to make. Let's start cutting out. You could either cut out with a rotary cutter and ruler or you could just use scissors if you like. So once you've cut out all of your base pieces, you can now start making all of your crazy crumb sections of the quilt. So before we started doing our crazy patchwork slash crumb quilting, the first thing we did was sort out our scraps. There was a lot to go through. We put them into groups of larger scraps, strings, little scraps and crumbs. I started joining my little crumbs together with a quarter inch seam allowance, just chaining them through to make some interesting pieces. It was like sewing fabric back together and I used up some crumbs that were otherwise too small to stitch and flip. We got some really interesting combinations. To start our crazy patchwork crumb section, I firstly organized my scraps that I would like to use. After a while though, I just stopped thinking about it and I just did whatever I wanted. It's good to start with a five-sided shape in the center. To make it more interesting, I joined two pieces together. A five-sided shape also means it will create a more interesting pattern as you progress. So place your next piece right sides together and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. The edge of this piece creates an extension of the next piece. So you want to place the next piece right sides together and extend it upwards to cover the first piece. Trim away the excess fabrics to reduce the bulk as you go. So now the next edge includes the blue fabric and the orange fabric. So continue the process of stitching, flipping and trimming. You may need to unpick a few stitches to get in there and cut out the bulk. Try not to think too hard about it and just enjoy the process. So some of my pieces for this demonstration are larger scraps. Crumb quilting involves using tiny, otherwise considered unusable pieces. This was one of our first crazy sections and if you are new to scrap quilting, you probably have a lot of larger pieces like me. I used them first and the excess became smaller crumbs to use in my other crazy patchwork sections. The more we did these crazy sections, the more our scraps turned into crumbs. When you make your own, you can use much smaller pieces than I have if you want to, to make it more of an authentic crumb quilt. I had finished my centerpieces I started using up my pre-made crumb sections as it was easy to mark a straight line, trim them and sew them on. As you go along you can trim off the excess fabric on the sides and reuse them again.
Another good tip is when you get closer to the end, find a triangle scrap as this gives more options to add some different shapes and flow to the crazy patchwork. Once you have finished your crazy sections, give them a press and trim them back to the same size as the base piece. So some troubleshooting and tips advice. When you are sewing on your pieces or pre-piece sections, sometimes you can get a shape that looks like this. We call this a boot and you want to try to avoid making a boot if possible as it's hard to crazy on from there. But don't stress if you make a boot, just unpick the piece that is obstructing a straight edge and sew on a better fit. The process of crazy patchwork is fluid. It doesn't matter how much you overthink it, mistakes are going to happen and things just may not fit in. So my best advice is to just cut out the overthinking part if possible and just see where the sewing takes you. Another good trick is what we call the pin and peek. You would be surprised with how many times we thought a piece was going to fit on a tiny slither of the base fabric and it didn't. So to help, we started pinning a piece on with a quarter inch like it was sewn and then peeking to see if it would fit. It saved a lot of unpicking down the track. An issue that Alora had was that her pre-piece sections were not sitting flat. This is because she didn't sew them straight. This can be fixed by marking a straight line with a ruler and trimming the edge straight. This really helped her to keep her work neat. So go ahead and make all your crumb sections. So once you have finished all of your crazy crumb pieces, the next thing is to cut out the extra pieces we need to start stitching and flipping onto our blocks. So the pattern will tell you how many background squares to cut out and the size and also the batting. And then you're going to need this background. So we've used a black. So two of these pieces here are our templates that we cut out previously. And then this is just a strip. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So I've cut out all of my 10 inch backing squares. I've used a different square for each backing square because I'm on a journey to use up all of my stash at the moment, but you can use the one fabric if you want to. And I have my batting squares cut out, they're nine inches. So they're smaller because I'm going to join the blocks together using my easy cover strip method. And just use a nice flat low loft batting. I'm just using a bamboo batting for this one. So for your background fabric, you need an absolute contrast so that all of your scraps, crumbs and strips are really going to stand out. That's why I'm using this black fabric. And to start with cutting out our templates, start by cutting one strip across fabric from selvage to selvage that is three and an eighth inch wide. So once again, to mark my template pieces, I'm going to open my strip out and work on a separate layer. This is the most economical way to cut my pieces out. And it's really important to make sure that the right side of your fabric is facing up as well as the right side of your templates. And we actually have that marked on the pattern saying it's super important. So start with your bigger piece and line the long straight edge up along one edge of the strip and hold it in place using your weights. And then we're just going to mark that on. So this time I'm actually using a sew line marker. It has a white lead in it. 
it's a nice fine marker. And now I'm just going to take my other piece and I'm going to put the long straight edge onto the raw edge. I can actually slide that down so that both edges meet like that. Just means I have to cut one less line and then I'm marking that in. I'll just put my special weight back on again. And then I'm just going to slide the next one along and place my large piece on and just continue marking one big piece, one small piece. Always making sure the longer edges are on the raw edge. And one advantage to making your templates out of cardboard where you just glue the pattern piece on and cut it out is that you'll always know that that is the right side facing up. So you wouldn't turn it like that. You just always know that that is the right side. Okay, so to speed up the cutting process, I have layered four strips on top of each other and I'm just going to hold them in place with one flat flower head pin in each shape. Now this is only going to work if you use flat pins because I'm now going to use my rotary cutter to cut out the shapes. So um, something for the um, scrap bin there. So the reason why I mention using flat flower head pins, any flat pin is okay because your ruler will sit nice and flat on top of a flat pin. Okay, so I have all of my pieces cut out of my background fabric. I have this piece here and this piece here. And for this strip here, I've just cut some inch and a half strips of fabric. So we're almost ready to start making a block, but we just need to organize our strings. Our strings are strips of fabric that are no wider than an inch and a half and no smaller than one inch. And that's because say for instance, a jelly roll strip, they're cut two and a half inches wide. It's just too big to put into that small section there. So if I had some leftover jelly roll strips, I would be cutting these in half. And so that would give me two strips that are an inch and a quarter wide. So I'm just basically cutting that straight through the center. I also have pieces that are a little bit sort of random like this. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut some strips. I'm going to cut some that are an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter and one inch wide. And then I'll be able to save these leftover pieces for scraps to use um, on another project. So it's just a matter of working through all of your pieces and just, you know, things like this. So cut them. The longest one is actually about nine, say nine and a half inches wide. So they can be nine and a half inches, you know, down to you know small little triangles like that. Now the reason why I like to make sure that these are all going to be different widths is because I really like the scrappy look and also it just means that you don't have to worry so much about all those seams lining up. So here I'm showing two blocks that I've already made and my strips here are all different sizes. So that means that in true string quilt style, you know, you don't have to worry too much about the seams lining up. So go ahead and organize all of your strings. So straightening up the edges of your strips and cutting them at either one and a half inches, one and a quarter inches or one inch wide. The next step is to prepare the block. So center a square of batting onto the wrong side of a backing square. This will give us a half inch gap all the way around the edge. This is to reduce the bulk in the seam when joining the blocks together using my easy cover strip method. Use a light application of basting spray to hold the batting and backing fabric together. Next, mark up the block with registration lines. There is a diagram in the pattern showing you how to do this. I'm using a 4B lead pencil because it marks easily onto the batting. But don't mark dark lines because dark lines may show through on light fabrics. So position this piece onto the block, lining up the bottom edge with our marked line. And you'll notice that the raw side edges are level with the edge of the block. And this point here is centered on our center diagonal line. So pop two pins in and head to the machine to start sewing. 
Thread your machine up with a neutral colored thread, something that looks good on the top and is also going to look good on your backing fabric because you will see that stitching. I have a size 80 quilting needle because I'm sewing through layers of fabric and you can use your quarter inch foot if you want to. I'm just using my standard foot with my needle position moved over to give me a quarter inch space from the edge of my foot to the needle. And it's a scant quarter inch that we need also. And just a stitch length of three and I have an automatic tie off set. So um, you might just want to do a little reverse stitch at the beginning and at the end where necessary and I'll show you where necessary when we start stitching. So first of all take one of your background strips and place it right sides together with the bottom edge of our scrappy crumb piece and you only need to extend the beginning of it over the back around fabric or the backing fabric by a quarter of an inch and make sure that it's sitting nice and level on our marked line. And now we're going to sew across the edge with a scant quarter inch seam allowance and if I forgot to mention our stitch length is three. And just finish sewing level with the edge of the backing fabric. So flip this strip over to the right side. Just to make things a little bit easier at the moment, you can just trim the strip away that we don't need and I just kind of roughly trim it slightly just a little bit bigger than the edge of our background square. Before I press I'm just going to rotate the block and I'm going to begin sewing on my other background pieces. So take your smaller background piece first of all it's a little bit of an odd shape but the longer edge of the piece is about the same size as this edge of our quilted or sorry our crummy section and what we're going to do is we're going to place it right sides together. Now this bit here this little point is going to extend past our center point here by about a quarter of an inch and you'll see that down the bottom it's actually in about a quarter of an inch. So what that means is that where our quarter inch seam is it's going to be level with this little corner here where it meets the edge of our backing fabric. So that our stitches don't cross over on the back of our block we're going to mark a dot that is in line with our center diagonal line and a quarter inch in on our background fabric. So about there, always hard to see on black fabric. There if you can see that. And so when I sew I'm going to sew from the dot to the outer edge of the backing square. So start sewing at the dot you need to do a little reverse stitch or if you've got your tie off set we need that to be secure where we start but when you get to the end no need you can just sew straight to the end without any tie off or reverse stitch. So flip your fabric over to the right side and you know that your seam allowance is correct. You know you've got a nice scant quarter inch seam. If when you press this piece up this bit here meets our marked line here. So I'm just about there which is quite good. So before I sew on my other pieces I'm just going to remove the pins and press these two pieces. It's always a good idea to use a cotton or a bamboo batting. You don't want to use something that is going to melt under the iron if the iron accidentally touches it. So now take the longer piece and you'll see that it's got a one really long edge and that one is going to go all the way from the start or the edge of the block here all the way and crossing over this section here. That oh and you'll also see that you've got that top corner lining up. So place this one right sides together and lining it up so that um, you've got about a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the block. So where your quarter inch seam goes that actually hits the edge of the block and then this piece will come along here and it's a little bit longer it actually um, hits the edge of the block so you know you're going quite well there. When you start sewing you can actually just start sewing without a little reverse stitch or tie off but we do want to finish sewing a quarter of an inch away from where this line here ends. So there's our line and this quarter inch we want to be about there. So you can see it's a quarter inch in from the edge of the fabric there. So 
So flipping over to the right side and you'll see that our piece is fitting in nicely with the corner and once again you want to make sure that this line meets our marked line running along the top edge there. So you'll see that this edge here is running along our marked line and it continues on to this piece here and this is just a little bit of excess fabric from our corner so you can just trim that little bit away there. Give it a press before we move on to sewing on the strings. So this is what your block should look like now. So let's start stitching and flipping those strings on. So grab any strip that's any width and we're going to place it right sides together with our background strip. It only needs to extend past the edge of your backing fabric by a quarter of an inch. And we're just going to place that right sides together and stitch. No need to do any tie offs at the beginning or at the end. And we're just going to finish level with the edge of our backing fabric. So finishing level with our backing fabric, not the batting. And flip. Now it's up to you whether you want to press after every time that you flip. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But when I've got a big long piece hanging off the end like that, I'll just get my scissors and I'll just trim it just a, a tiny bit outside the edge of the backing fabric before I go on to my next strip. So this is a stitch, flip, press if you want to and trim as you go project. And the reason why we do that is because we're working with all different strips of widths and different lengths and it's just the easiest way to work. So continue stitching and flipping those strips onto both sides of the block until the block is completely covered and try and mix it up between the different widths. So a general rule of thumb is that when we finish the blocks we're going to give them a little bit of a trim and we're going to join them with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance so what is going to be seen of the block is the section where the batting is. When you get to the corners avoid having little tiny slithers on the corner because you've got to realise that by the time we take our seam allowance it could end up disappearing altogether. So sometimes I might find little leftover triangle pieces and I'll use those as my corners.
So trim your block back to the same size as your backing square. It may have shrunk a little bit, but don't stress too much because we will do a final trim before we join the blocks together. And here's our finished block. This is what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. Just a couple of threads to trim away. This quilt is actually made up of the one block design and when you put them with the others and you rotate them in different directions, you're going to get a ring forming from our scrappy crummy sections and then our strings are going to form some diamonds and once we get our other blocks made, you're going to see some secondary patterns forming from diamonds in different areas of the quilt. So I absolutely love how this quilt is coming together. I've got to say, I think I might change this little plain piece out. It looks a little bit weird. And <laughs> I do have two pieces lining up, so I might change one of those triangles. So a really good tip is as you're making the blocks, have its neighbor next to it and make sure as you're going along that no two strips are lining up that are the same fabric and that, um, that they're all kind of like just going nicely together. So I hope you love this quilt. I'm loving it. I'm going to keep on making some more blocks now. It's a new day, I'm back and I have trimmed all of my blocks and I've laid them out and I've numbered them all. So yesterday by accident when we were putting them up onto the design wall we realised that this block can spin in different ways and make different patterns so it can make rings or it can make stars and so we let everybody know on our socials they got to vote which way they liked and it was pretty much 50-50 so we decided to stick with the original design which is the rings. We decided to stick with the rings because we like the way that it makes the crazy patchwork stand out and the other way also looked fantastic but it's probably a little bit too busy and as I said it's one of those great blocks that you can make any way that you like. So now I'm going to join the blocks together quilt as you go using my easy cover strip method. There are lots of different ways to do quilt as you go. Some of them I haven't even shown you on this channel yet, so keep an eye out for that next year. But today I'm going back to the good old cover strip method. The reason why I love it is because it's fully machine sewn, it's great for beginners, and we're gonna put the cover strips on the back, and that's gonna give us no interruptions between the block. One more thing to mention before we start joining the blocks is that if you want to, you can come back and stitch in the ditch of each of these crazy patchwork joins. That's optional. I'm not going to do that because my batting said that I can have quilting lines spaced four inches apart and that's pretty much what that is. To prepare to join your blocks together, trim them all back to nine and three quarters and just make sure that from the corners to the top of the rings is the same amount. I've got a bit of a trick in my pattern for that. So when you're trimming, that means that you're going to be trimming about an eighth of an inch off around the edge of the block and that is going to give you a gap of batting that's about three eighths of an inch. So our seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, which is the same as one centimeter. And if your batting has shifted a little bit, don't worry too much about that. And that's why I say use a nice flat low line batting and it's just good that the batting isn't going to be all the way through the seam because that really does reduce the bulk. I have prepared my cover strip so the cover strip is basically a two inch strip cut across the fabric from selvage to selvage and it's made up with a one inch bias tape maker. In the pattern I'll tell you how many strips that you need to cut. With this quilt that I'm making because it's just a small quilt I don't actually have to join any of my strips so if you do need to join them you just join them on a 45 degree join, trim away the seam allowance and press the seam open before you run it through with the bias maker. So this is our fourth video this year on the easy cover strip method and in every video I show something a little bit different. So with the pattern pull string quilt I joined the blocks together and then I sewed on the cover strip before joining those rows together to make the complete quilt. With our free quilt to go along quilt 
I joined the blocks to make the rows, but then I joined two rows together before I added the cover strip on the back and then joined it together. But with this quilt, because it's just a small quilt, it's only about 40 inches square, a little bit less than that. I'm actually going to join the complete quilt together before adding the cover strip. So if you are new to quilting, this is the perfect size to start with. It's really easy to manage and it's just a great one to get started with. So keep following along because there's always something new to learn with our videos. So step one is to join your blocks together in rows with right sides facing and we're going to take a 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance. Just have your machine set up for quilting. I have, I'm just using my standard foot. I have a size 80 quilting needle. I'm using a black thread with a stitch length of three and make sure that you do a little reverse stitch at the beginning and end of each row. My best tip for this is before you join two blocks together pull on one that one's really solid pull on this one that one's got a bit of stretch so always sew with the more solid one on top. And another tip is that when you're sewing you're going to have a ridge that is formed by the thickness of the batting so don't let the foot push away from that ridge and always stay true to that one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. That's normally always the first line outside of your foot. And there you go. So what I've done, I made sure that when I trimmed my blocks, I had the same distance from the top of the block to where the ring starts. And then underneath here, as we go down, if these don't line up exactly, which they actually looking pretty good there, but if they don't line up exactly, it doesn't matter because there's just so much going on and all of these strips are different widths. It's still gonna look really good. So keep joining the blocks together to make the rows. So press the seams open every time you finish sewing a row. This is going to give us our raw seam, which is sitting nice and flat, and that's what we're going to cover with the cover strip. So on to the next row. Don't lose your place. <laughs> I'll try not to. Anything's possible with me. I know, that's true. Have fun. something out of scraps I think. It is, it is. I noticed one thing though, I tried to make sure that no two fabrics lined up and look at that right in the, oh! <laughs> what? Oh uh, my god! Oh, all three! <laughs> all three! Oh no. Oh. Can you put that, move that row up or something? Oh that's a great idea. Okay, I'll, um, I'm gonna okay. keep joining them. I'm actually not going to unpick that because I think that that's kind of okay. And um, yeah, I'll do that. All right. That's so funny. <laughs> it's funny. You even numbered everything too. I did, and I looked at everything so many times.
like someone like me who just really wants to make a quilt, is a beginner, doesn't know where to start, so what would you say to them? I'd say start with something about this size and definitely start with quilt as you go because you just learn so much along the way and you're making the whole quilt yourself from start to finish and that's a really great feeling. Why you just don't use pins? Like, do you not need them? Like, what's the deal? Okay, so, <laughs> so you can use pins if you want to, but um, because I just find that the blocks, you know, they're only small that you don't really need to. But if you do want to use them, by all means, definitely use them. So if you're sewing like a bigger block? Probably with bigger blocks, yeah, up to 20 inches, I would probably um, pin them together. But this is just really easy. And if you stick with that little rule of the non-stretchy one on top, it's always going to hopefully end up being the same length at the bottom. Um, I have another question. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, why do you use a stitch length of three? So... I use a stitch length of three because you want to have a longer stitch length when you're sewing through thicker layers and also through batting. And I also do that because if you were sewing with a small stitch length of say two or 2.5 and you made a mistake, it's really hard to unpick. So with that stitch length of three, yeah, just if you have to unpick, it's easy, but it also sews through the thicker layers better. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Sort of everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's join our rows together. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this time we will pin and we're going to make sure that our seams line up exactly. So pop a pin in a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge, in, right in the center of the seam. Then go through our underneath one, going through the center of the seam. Squeeze them together and then come back, making sure you're in the seam and back up the other side like that. Probably a good idea also if you pop one pin in each block like that because unfortunately when you're sewing the rows together my little trick about having the non-stretchy one on the top doesn't always work out when we're sewing rows together. You could have a stretchy one here and a solid one here so it is a good idea to pin the rows. You got your trusty tailors all out? I have and um, the reason for that is that if I've got a stretchy block on top and I need to ease it in I just use my tailor's awl to ease the fabric towards the foot. Don't forget to slide your pins out just before you get to them. Wow. Looking good. Okay so now flip over and press that seam open. So just repeat the process of pinning the rows together and sewing them. Which is all about finding your own groove and going with it. Don't forget to slide your pins out just before you get to them.
and here are my blocks all joined together so it looks nice and neat on the front and on the back we have the raw seam that we're going to cover with the cover strip so I am going to cover all of the seams going down first of all and then I'll come back and do all of my acrossways seams to make sure that the cover strips are going to be perfectly straight and centered mark a line that's half an inch away from the seam on both sides of the seam and do this to every seam I'm going to use a sew line duo marker this is kind of looks a bit like a brown texture but the lines come off when you use the wipe off pen so place the half inch line of your ruler right in the center of the seam and marking. When you mark, angle your marker in towards the ruler to make sure that it's an accurate line. Yep, all marked up. And to sew, I'm going to roll up one edge so that I can easily get to my first seam. To sew the cover strip on, I'm going to use this edge stitching foot this foot has a guide in the center of it and I'm just going to move my needle position all the way over to the left like that and I have a stitch length of three on and it's just a matter of choosing a color thread that's going to blend with everything so I've got a lot of black in this quilt so I'm going to use black thread on the top and on the bottom and I'm just going to hold my cover strip in place in between my marked lines and I'm just going to sew. Now um, you can check out my other videos. There's one where I've used fusible web and another one where I've actually used some glue to hold it in place. But just have a little practice and see what works for you. But I do find that just holding it in place really is easy enough to do. So just start with a little reverse stitch nice and close to the edge because that will go into the binding seam. And I'm just running the edge of the guide. So the guide's just going on the edge of my cover strip. That keeps my stitching nice and straight and neat and just sewing away. I always use one hand to hold it in place and the other hand to just help move it through the machine. Finishing level with the edge and a little reverse stitch. So before you sew any more, have a look on the front and double check that your tension is nice and if so, you can continue on and sew your cover strips on the next row. It's just unrolling the quilt as you go. So I'm going to continue sewing my cover strips on all of my downways rows and I'm sewing on one side of the cover strip and then when I've done that I'll turn it around and sew down the other side.
myself sewn all the way down one side. Now I'm just going to turn it around and sew down the other side, rolling it up just in the same way that I did before. As you're sewing, if you have some frayed edges, just scrape them underneath the cover strip with a tailor's awl or your scissors. This size quilt is so easy to work on. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. But I was just saying before, seriously, check out our other videos um, using this method because every time I do it, I show something a little bit different and you'll get more tips watching all the other videos. Done. Now, all I have to do is do the same thing on my seams that go in the other direction. And this is what it looks like from the front. You can see that they just look like quilting lines sewn half an inch away from the seam on both sides of the seam. Pretty neat, isn't it? Now when we sew over these crossways joins, you'll see that it's not thick and bulky because the batting isn't in the seam. All done. I'm in love with this quilt. I absolutely love how the cover strips on the back Using the black thread, you can see them on the front, those stitching lines, and they're just looking like quilting lines and tying in with the whole quilt. Using up fabric from my stash that probably would have just ended up in the bin, I'm so happy that I saved them and made a beautiful wall quilt out of them. So we really hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget the pattern is available to purchase on our website. It's only 12 Australian dollars and we appreciate all of your purchases because it helps us to keep making these videos because we believe that sewing and learning to sew should be available to everyone. So thanks a lot and we'll see you next time. Bye.